Starship is currently the largest spacecraft ever constructed, and it'll be taller and heavier than both the iconic Saturn V and NASA's Space Launch System. At liftoff, the booster's 33 Raptor engines will produce an incredible 17 million pounds of thrust, and even more than 20 million pounds with Raptor engine's latest version. The end result, it generates a massive pressure wave upon liftoff that's incredibly dangerous to anyone around. And this has raised many questions about where to safely launch and land Starship. Even under ideal circumstances, it'd be necessary to keep people away from the pad. But what if the worst were to happen? It's one thing if a single-engine prototype catches on fire, but if a fully-fueled Starship stack were to explode on the pad, the resulting fireball would release enough energy that's equivalent to several kilotons of TNT. So to mitigate these risks, rocket enthusiasts have proposed a solution. Launch Starship from sea-based platforms. This is an idea that SpaceX itself had planned in order to address the challenges posed by Starship's power on land. But SpaceX ultimately decided to forego that potential option. So, why did SpaceX ditch the Starship sea launch platform? Stay tuned as we dive into these questions and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. The plan to build a sea-based launch platform SpaceX first came out in 2020. While responding to a comment about past efforts to launch rockets from the ocean, Elon, SpaceX's CEO, casually mentioned building floating, super-heavy-class spaceports for Mars, Moon, and hypersonic travel around Earth. This statement indicated a grand idea was being pursued. And of course, it wasn't without merit. Elon had observed the proven technology of floating launch platforms, like the Zenit rocket, which had successfully completed more than 30 orbital launches from its unique floating pad. These sea-based launch platforms have the advantage of being semi-submersible, giving them a robust construction that's less susceptible to waves and wind compared to SpaceX's current drone ships. Moreover, it also gives spacecraft advantages when they're launched from the sea. While launches from ground bases typically result in used stages falling back to Earth, and that can cause significant damage to densely populated areas and also lead to the leakage of toxic chemicals and unused propellant in the ground. On the other hand, these risks are mitigated when they use offshore oil rigs to launch their spacecraft. This approach also addresses noise concerns and increases launch frequency. For Starship, SpaceX's future spacecraft that's projected to be produced in the hundreds each month and perform test launches several times every day, SpaceX plans to utilize it as a transportation system for point-to-point -point travel on Earth. Starship has the potential to replace current commercial airplanes, offering increased capacity for both cargo and passengers, aligning with SpaceX's ambitious goals. However, there isn't anywhere on land that has enough pads to handle so many launches. Example. A direct flight from Texas to Singapore or a similar destination could take 20 hours or more. But utilizing the Starship rocket, this same journey would take less than an hour, roughly around 45 minutes. This huge reduction in travel time means that the rocket could be utilized up to 20 times more frequently compared to that of an aircraft. So clearly, a sea-based platform comes across as the logical choice for SpaceX because it provides a practical solution to handle the high volume of launches that Starship aims to achieve. By using floating launch platforms, SpaceX can also expand its launch capabilities, effectively reducing travel times and revolutionizing long-distance transportation here on Earth. The first operation for this plan took place in July 2020, when SpaceX's subsidiary, Lone Star Mineral Development, acquired two semi-submersible drilling rigs from Valeris PLC. The rigs were originally identical and were soon renamed Phobos and Deimos after the two moons of Mars. After the purchase, Phobos was relocated to Mississippi in early 2021 for a refit to adapt it for Starship operations. The refit of the rig was planned to take six months, involving the removal of the existing oil rig equipment and then transforming it to meet the requirements of SpaceX's ambitious plans. The extensive refit of Phobos over an extended period demonstrated significant fundamental modifications to convert the oil drilling rig into a floating and reusable platform. During this period, notable progress was also made in terms of demolition work on Deimos. Images of both rigs side by side revealed substantial demolition that had been accomplished on Deimos. The progress seems to have sped up, showing us that SpaceX has been keeping busy and staying productive. 
But progress on the two rigs suddenly came to a halt at the start of 2022. And it wasn't until February of this year that a proper update was given on the platform's launch website, bringing unfavorable news. The project might have gotten off to a false start, as SpaceX President Gwen Shotwell acknowledged at the FAA's Commercial Space Transportation Conference back in February. We bought them, we sold them, they were not the right platform. She emphasized the need to fly Starship to gain a better understanding of the spacecraft before determining the best launch approach. SpaceX's priority lies in conducting more Starship flights to get crucial data and refine their launch and landing designs. Even Elon himself said back in 2021 that the development of offshore launch platforms wasn't a primary focus for SpaceX, as their attention was directed towards advancing Starship flights. The shift in focus towards Starship's orbital test flight and other ongoing projects is a crucial milestone in its development. This demands dedicated attention and resources from the SpaceX team. Plus, the busy activities at both Starbase and the Cape Kennedy launch site have also contributed to the temporary neglect of the oil rigs. Furthermore, we can still observe several limitations when launching from a sea-based platform. Although it may seem like a simple solution to direct the rocket exhaust straight into the ocean to avoid damaging the launch pad, experts familiar with offshore rigs quickly point out that it's not that simple. The intense heat generated by the rocket exhaust would essentially boil the ocean water just beneath the floating platform, and that would compromise its buoyancy. Moreover, this boiling effect could have detrimental effects on the marine ecosystem, potentially harming the living organisms underneath the platform. Additionally, regular launch activities involve a significant amount of seawater, which results in wet conditions that can cause irreversible corrosion. Next, SpaceX would encounter challenges in transporting the Starship and booster from the mainland to the sea base platform. This task is more complex than moving the Falcon 9 on a floating platform, particularly when we look at past incidents where boosters have accidentally ended up in the ocean. And then there's the crucial issue of fuel transport. The Gulf of Mexico lacks natural gas lines, power lines, or pipelines, making it difficult to transport fuel inland. Consequently, SpaceX would have to find a solution for delivering fuel to platforms that are designed to receive fuel from onshore sources. This might require the construction of specialized ships that can store and transport the fuel. In general, constructing a sea-based launch pad from an oil rig is a challenging task for SpaceX, and that's due to the complex process involved in converting the oil rig into a functional rocket launcher at sea. It requires a pretty substantial investment and a lot of time to complete. So at this time, SpaceX is going to stay highly focused on upgrading ground launch facilities and advancing the Starship for their next round of testing. This upcoming test is going to be crucial for SpaceX's future. Although the return of sea-based launch pads hasn't been indicated, there is still hope for the concept of rockets crossing the ocean. We'll have many pads to support the high launch rate, Gwen Shotwell, SpaceX's president, later mentioned. She further stated, I think we'll have a lot of sea-based platforms as well. We have to see how this ship goes. This remark suggests that while the current focus is on ground facilities, SpaceX acknowledges the potential for sea-based platforms in the future. The company's keeping an open mind and will evaluate the performance and progress of its endeavors before they make any more decisions. And that's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below because your feedback is very important to us and it helps us make better videos for you to watch. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.